Am I the asshole for saying no to my in-laws taking our kids to Disney? My, male 28, wife, female 28, and I have two daughters, six and five years old, which is prime Disney age. They're both super into princesses and all that. We've talked about taking them to Disney over the next few years as we know they'd love it. My wife has never been before and I've only been once when I was 10 years old. It was definitely a memorable trip for me as my family had to save up for a while for it. We've always known that Disney would be our big trip with the girls. In July, my father-in-law got diagnosed with prostate cancer. After a few rounds of chemo and some rather intense stays at the hospital, it's only gotten worse. It's spread across to other organs in his body. And rather than trying to suffer to fight it, he's opted to just not do chemo and try to live with what time he has left. As a result, him and my mother-in-law have decided to make more memories with family. One of these memories is to take our daughters to Disney and surprise them with the trip yesterday during Christmas. At first, I thought my wife would be against it as well. We've always said we've wanted to get to experience taking them and seeing their faces. However, However, I found out that my mother-in-law cleared it with my wife last month. My wife didn't tell me because she thought I would be surprised and excited for our daughters. I sat through all of the rest of the night, but when we got home, we had a serious discussion about it. I told my wife I didn't want her daughter's first trip to Disney to be without us. She suggested we go along, but the trip is in February, and booking flights and hotel and tickets for just my wife and I for the time they're all going is still going to be almost five grand. I told my wife that we have to talk to her parents and decline the trip, but my wife, but my wife is saying that I'm being so selfish and heartless by robbing our daughters of this experience and robbing them of a core memory with my father-in-law before he passes. Am I being out of line here? Okay, this is a little bit of a complicated one, but yes, you're the asshole. There are several things to consider here. And as a dad, my immediate concern is not me being there to experience it with them, because although you would love to be there to experience it with them, that's a selfish feeling. So remove that from the equation here altogether, and let's examine everything else. As a dad, my immediate concern here is actually, are the in-laws, the grandparents, are they going to be able to take care of a five and six-year-old at Disney? For grandparents, like hanging out with kids for a few hours or, you know, even for an overnight thing, that's different than traveling with them and spending multiple days with them at a theme park. Kids are unique. They have unique needs. Like, And taking care of them means that you've got to make sure that they get up and brush their teeth and they put their clothes on and they're five and six. Like they're not independent adults yet. That doesn't really happen until I think 10 is the age where kids are, are really more independent and you don't have to tell them how to live. Um, but five and six, like that still requires a lot of parenting. And, you know, especially with one of these grandparents with bad health, are they going to be physically and mentally able to care for these kids at Disney for an extended period of time? That would be my immediate concern. And that would be the one reason that I would try to move heaven and earth to make sure that I was there. Not to interfere with that time, but to be a support mechanism that could help do the care for those kids so that the grandparents could enjoy their time with them instead of be working to take care of them the whole time. Obviously, this would mean that as a parent, I would be there and would be enjoying the time with them as well, but I would want it to be as focused as possible about them spending time with the grandparents. This is his last chance to make these big memories with them, and you're going to rob them from it purely for a selfish reason. That sucks. If you have the ability, whip out the credit cards and and make it happen. Obviously, that's not an ideal situation, but nothing about this is ideal, so move heaven and earth to make it happen for your kids. This is not about you. This is about the kids. So either get one of you there to help be a caregiver to make sure that the grandparents have support in taking care of the kids with the care part of it that ends up being a lot of work for a five and six year old or move heaven and earth and go in debt and just make sure that you can both be there to actually enjoy the time with them as well. I think robbing them of this time for the selfish reasons that you've cited here, OP, does make you the asshole. Sorry to say it, but it does. This is a huge opportunity for for them to get to experience that with their grandpa who isn't going to be here much longer. So take yourself out of the equation and focus on him and them and do the right thing there. That's my thought here. So OP is the asshole. Let's figure out how big of an asshole he be. Ascon scale. As a reminder, Ascon 1 is the worst. Ascon 4 is the least amount of asshole that you can be on the scale. Ascon 1 is no way you should have done that. You're a terrible human being. Ascon 2 is you definitely shouldn't have done that, but it doesn't make you a terrible 
difficult person. Ascon 3 is you probably should have approached that differently. And Ascon 4 is you probably could have approached that differently. Maybe you're an asshole, maybe you're not. I feel like OP is definitely an Ascon 3 at least here because this should have been approached differently. Maybe an Ascon 2 definitely shouldn't have done that, but it doesn't make you a terrible person. I mean, the selfish reasoning here being the only motivator that's driving him to axe this whole thing is a terrible thing to do. I'm trying to reserve that Ascon one for the truly terrible assholes that we run into, though, like the mother-in-law on the 10-mile hike. So that one's going to be an award winner. I'll tell you that for free. Let's say Ascon 2, because although the selfish motivation is a terrible thing, I don't think OP is a terrible person person overall. They're just letting their selfish desires get in the way of this. If OP follows through with not allowing his kids to go, that's probably an Ascon 1 offense. I'm just giving him a little bit of grace for the hope that he ends up finding a way for at least one of the parents to go and that the kids still get to go and make this one last hoorah memory with their grandpa who's not going to be here much longer. So let me know what you guys think though. This is a complicated one. I think as a parent with kids over a broader age range that kind of gives gives me an insight into, you know, what areas need more help. I feel like five and six are ages that that need some more parental help. Anything under that age for sure, I would say they'd have to be at least seven for me to feel a little more comfortable with them going just with grandparents without having the parents there to be able to help do the work involved with caring for kids. So let me know what you guys think, though. You don't have to agree with me. It's more fun when you don't. So let me know what your thoughts are and let's start a conversation, shall we?